a message to our brothers and sisters. Hotep, I'm Dr. Gloria Lattimore Peace, host and producer of Omni U Presents, the H3O Art of Life show. And I want to tell you that very often I have a guest that is more interesting than the topic. And I would just <laughs> have the, 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 the inclination to just interview the guests about the guests rather than explore the topic. But I know I have to do this, I have to do this topic and then I guess I'll have to do another show with the guests and explore the guests. I may still do a little of it. But the, the title of our show today is Our Daily Bread, The Philosophy of Food. And what inspired me, uh, prompted me to do this is reading the Empress Menon Chronicles in which there was a lot about the Ital diet, which is basically a plant-based diet um, and, and a concept that I saw in there that I j just arrested me and where Mama Tradition said, we don't have a diet, we have a live it. Yes. And I thought that is exactly what we need, not something from which we will derive no life. Mm -hmm but something from which we will derive life. And so, and they, they, have, they have a concept called liberty. You know, the, the aspiration toward living, not just toward being alive, but thriving. And so I was so very happy that I was able to get Imani Bar Barbaroos, who is a raw food chef, yeah. to come on the show and tell me why she does what she does and how long she's been doing it and then talk about some of the things that um, that I saw in this book which she is in um, so that the viewer could understand this this business of live it or live it rather than diet is very serious business and so when we contemplate what it is we are going to put in our bodies, we need to think about something that will give us life, something that has the capacity to give us life and not something whose capacity to give us life was doubtful in the first place. But if it is dead, it's absolutely non-existent. So talk to me, Imani, about this because I need you. I, I, told, I sent you a text and I said, you do all these things, you and your husband, your husband's a doctor. Yes. Yes. And you do all these things you, you address. Tell me the, the long list that you gave me. Was it diabetes and hypertension? Yes. Give yes. me that list again. Well, that's been a journey. I'm a raw food chef. I've been a living food eater for 17 years. You look like a living food eater. <laughs> yes, I'm 52 years old. Really? Or 52 years young and seasoned. Okay. I come up with a new word. And um, I attribute that to living food, eating living food, and just having a new thought about how we decide to put something in our body. And if we recognize that each cell has its living organism, it's living cycles of reproduction and um, cleansing, and then we want to put something in our bodies that immediately feeds ourselves. And supports the activity. And of supports the, the activity that is needed. And so it was a journey. Like, so like I said, 17 years I have been eating living food. And it began because my brother had lupus. 
and we had taken him everywhere, all over, Mayo Clinic, Northwestern, John Hopkins, everywhere. They didn't know what was going on. And actually, it wasn't until three months before he transitioned, it's been 10 years um, since uh, he died, that even a diagnosis was given. So initially, what happened, the doctor said, he had a vasculitis neuritis and the veins and the nerves were attacking his body. And that's what they could say, but they, they didn't have a name to call the disease. And you know, lupus comes in all forms. Mm -hmm. So they didn't call it that yet. But a doctor, and he's, he was well known in Chicago, and at this moment his name escapes me, but he was older, he was 92, and he said, I've only seen this three times. You need to find out about living food, raw food, I don't know a lot about it, but the people that I've seen use that have been able to heal themselves. And we went on the journey of finding more about raw food. So the internet introduced me to more um, information about raw food. But I went the route of cakes and cookies, raw pies, those type of things. My brother said, I need healing food because you can make raw cakes, raw pies, raw cookies, raw bread. I saw, I think, a, a raw bean pie yes. in, in this book. Yes, you can, you can do those things, but he needed healing. And those foods are yummy. They do have more of a healing process than a baked pie, but he needed you know, juice and um, fasting and um, just some simple, simple eating. And that took me time to get there. And at the same time, I discovered I had an autoimmune issue, which was a thyroid issue. And I was still researching and learning about raw food. And um, there was the Botanko family that is well known in the raw community. The, the wife, Victoria Botanko, is considered like the mother of green smoothies. So again, this was 17 years ago. And so we learned about green smoothies and how making smoothies breaks down the food, the greens in particular. Makes it immediately accessible, accessible by the cells. Right, so mm -hmm. we started with green smoothies. I started with green smoothies to help heal my thyroid. And that took all the symptoms away. In terms of my brother, his skin was opening up his hands were turning into, it looked like gangrene. The raw food, the juices, the green smoothies, the simple, simple eating, you know, because he was trying to heal, just healed him. You wouldn't believe it, it looked like a cartoon. It, his hands were black, a couple of weeks of juicing, fasting, eating simply, his hands were just beautiful, reversing those type of things. So fast forward, to maybe the last five to seven years. I have been asking my husband, because um, he is an a, a allopathic trained medical doctor, let's do this, we can start help. I have been helping people, but I needed more help to really understand the history, what things can be mixed with particular medicines because people were coming for help with me and not everybody wanted to stop you know, what their doctor was saying mm -hmm. to do. And we needed to find a way to merge what they were doing to, you know, get off their diabetic medicine, mm -hmm. their heart medicine, their, mm -hmm. their blood pressure medicine. And you don't want to just stop it. Mm -hmm. You want to work wean. your way. You want to wean, you want to mm -hmm. work your way, especially things like um, uh, steroids. Mm -hmm. You, you, you got to be very careful. And I, right. needed, I needed his help. And he was still interested in eating all the non-living foods <laughs> mm -hmm. that he was uh, eating. But I started a program that was also from Victoria um, Bictanko called 12 Steps to Raw. But I would cater it to where the people were. You know, some people could do that 12 steps quickly, you know, jump quickly right into raw foods. But some people needed to stay with their meat, take their meat from fried to broiled. Mm -hmm. Add some veggies. Mm -hmm. take reduce the, the number reduce of days it one you step have it. Yes. So right. I would cre create a program around those, depending on where you were and how you wanted to go. And from there, 
I started to, people would say, hey, my father just got diagnosed with cancer. Are you willing to help him change his diet? And every person that I have worked with who has had cancer has reversed the cancer. But you have to be willing to do the diet. And the next thing you gotta the, be- No, the live it. The live, the live it. The live it. You, you have, have got to, to be willing to take that lifestyle right. shift and live it. Right. Live it truly. And you can never go back. And that's hard for some people. Mm -hmm. Once you change, you cannot go back because you will resort back to mm -hmm. whatever the dis-ease you were having. Mm -hmm. So you have to live it for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that is hard for people to recognize, even myself. You have to live it. The inflammation will return. Right. Well, you know that it, I think the same thing would be true of alcohol or any other Everything, drug. Yes. That, you know, if you manage, if you, if, I've always said, if a door opens, run through it mm -hmm. and do not look back. Like Sodom and Gomorrah. Yes. Do not look back but, and turn into a pillar of salt. <laughs> because if you go back through that door, it seems that the door will disappear. Yes. And you will never again find your way no, out. You, 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 I mean, once you have some damage, the damage, particular damage of tissue, mm -hmm. the damage is done. Mm -hmm. But the body is magnificent and you can still have some healing. Mm -hmm. You can still mm -hmm. constitute healing with the And as diet. you pointed out, your brother passed away, but look at what his condition was before. Well, let me say that that was 14 years mm -hmm. and he got to re remarkable health. He was able to, he had been an electrician, mm -hmm. and so he decided to switch that because it was so physical and he needed to concentrate more mm -hmm. on how he was living mm -hmm. and his livid um, experiences mm -hmm. with food. Mm -hmm. But he was able to um, move to Lincoln, no, Langston, Langston University, mm -hmm. and go to Lincoln mm -hmm. there. and. Um, he was able to change his profession to accounting. Mm -hmm. He began to grow his food there. He lived in Langston, which is a small town. Mm -hmm. He lived in Langston, he grew his food. He did remarkable healing mm -hmm. before um, coming back to Chicago. Mm -hmm. And even with those three years, mm -hmm. but he decided that living at that level was very difficult in the environment, and that helps. Mm -hmm. That happens in the mm -hmm. environment of, and um, I'm gonna say my grandmother, mm -hmm. I mean it with love though, but you know, your grandmother's cooking, your grandmother's, you know, uh, the, you know, that type of environment. So creating an environment in a community of mm -hmm. livid eaters, mm -hmm. livid living mm -hmm. people is very, very important. Mm -hmm. um, so if, if he had, one little taste, it, it, it would affect him, it mm -hmm. affected him. Mm -hmm. But after a while, he was tired. So he lived 14 years dealing with eating that livid diet every day mm -hmm. and not, like you said, going through the door and, and becoming And a having pillar. that door mm -hmm. closed And again, once you. you've had particular damage mm -hmm. of the tissue, it's difficult. Mm -hmm. It is difficult. Right. Once you had the particular Because it didn't take, it. your body didn't get into that condition overnight. Overnight. And so, you know, even though you saw the miraculous immediate effects mm -hmm. of the livid. Yes. You still knew that there was some work. There were constant. That still needed to be done because the body is continuing. Yes. You know, cells are being born, others are growing, others are wearing out, and others are dying. So you, you still are going through your life cycle as, as you, you were. Still going and my brother just decided to make a transition. He did not, he just stopped eating. He just decided, okay, I'm just going to stop eating. And even the doctors, and my my husband, they thought, oh, you you're not sick like that. You you you're not about to make a transition, mm -hmm. you know, that quick. It will take a long time. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if he knew, but he, he probably had stopped eating before he actually told us. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't 
you know, I, mm -hmm. I'm not very sure, but mm -hmm. um, he went on hop hospice. And it only took about three or four days, mm -hmm. but it was peaceful. We were there with him around the mm -hmm. clock. He did have a couple of sips of water every now and then if he felt dry, but he made the decision, mm -hmm. you know, and the was doctor- Was he tired? He was tired. Mm -hmm. He was tired. The doctors thought, no, you, you're not sick like that. You're mm -hmm. not, you know, they mm -hmm. thought- You had plenty of time. You, yes, they yeah. didn't think that, but he was tired. So mm -hmm. he made that decision. The, the, um, the livid experience of, um, you know, the living diet, mm -hmm. it, it supported him well. It was mm -hmm. just difficult for him to keep it. And, you know, people were helping to take care of him and they didn't understand the diet. Like my mother has a new uh, if you awareness. If you keep using diet, you're going to oh, be put I'm in sorry. a corner. I'm sorry, has another, the, the, the living experience. My mother has a new experience mm -hmm. with eating living food mm -hmm. over the 10 years mm -hmm. that my brother made the transition. But at that time, my family was like, you can't eat rabbit food. Well, see, here's, that's, <laughs> when my former guest was talking about the illusion mm. yes. that we, we live with yes. on a daily basis and yes. the need for us to come together and have a social theory. Mm -hmm. uh, why I'm calling this a philosophy of food is I'm saying there has to be a philosophy, which, which it, that is to say, you have to have a basis on which you are doing what you're doing in your life. And when it comes to choosing, selecting food, there needs to be, you need to decide what you're eating. What you're eating. The, um, and the autonomy to make decisions about what we would eat was in captivity. Yes. Because yes. when you take a people captive, and they have nothing at all to eat. There are, um, there, 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 I don't know if this book exists, but I got a hold of some chapters mm -hmm. from, a, from a book called Advice Among Slave Masters, okay. or Advice Among Masters, in which they talked about the, now this is for real, diet mm -hmm. of, of the, the people that they held in bondage. And what they did was, what, what was recommended and what was followed as a practice was that one or two people were assigned to be in charge of the school supply and there was a list of the things that they would have. Fat back, mm -hmm. molasses, flour, so that they could, you know, make biscuits and bread and, and use molasses and, and, you know, fried bacon mm -hmm. or salt pork as, as we would call it. Yes. But the point was that the people, the, the majority of people had no control at all over what they would eat. Yes. And they, you know they worked from sun up to sundown. Mm -hmm. And when they came home, they said the reason that the, this, this advice was given to the other slave mm -hmm. masters was that when the food was given to the, the people, the individuals, they would be so tired very often they would burn their dinner or they wouldn't eat mm -hmm. right or they would eat too much and mm -hmm. not have enough to last. So they rationed the food so, so much per person and put somebody in charge of it. So when they came back from the fields, they could go straight to this area, this communal yes, kitchen yes, yes. and get this, this kind of food. At some point, there were some classes, field niggas, house niggas, mm -hmm. yard niggas. The field niggas got to be in the house. I mean, the house yeah. niggas got to be in the house. Mm -hmm. And they prepared the food for the family. So they got a hold of a lot more things. Yes, yes. The people in bondage it, who were in the yard and in the field didn't get a hold of that but they thought it was a luxury. Mm -hmm. So at whatever point in life they, they were able to eat what they call high on the hog, mm -hmm. then it, that was cause to celebrate. So we have gotten into, we are eating like we are still on the plantation. We are yes. eating yeah. like we are 
house niggas, and I can use that because I know that I'm not disparaging anybody. Yes, absolutely, I'm using absolutely. a term yes. that was common. Yes. We can pretend that we now live in the house and we have access to ham and we have access to all the all these too rich foods foods with too much everything sugar yep. salt and even food like products is not even food anymore. right right out the box the mm -hmm. one advantage that we had at some point was when we were able to have small gardens and grow our own and we yes. were able to grow some things yes and so but the thing is, we ha we're eating like we're still on the plantation. We're eating like we're envious of what is being served in the house. We're eating like if we can, the more of the things that we can get that were served in the house, the more successful we are mm -hmm. and the more we can boast to each other what we had for this holiday or that holiday. And well, we've got to get that slave mentality there must be a debriefing. And check. Yes. We We've must. got to mm -hmm. recognize that we didn't choose that diet. Mm -hmm. We didn't choose it. It was imposed upon us. And in the same way that you want to unlock the chains around your legs, mm -hmm. around your arms, you need to unlock the, the chains chain. around your mind. We have to have a process of debriefing. When I was in the kitchen with um, Mama Tradition, it was really a great experience, and I think we have to really bring that back into our lives that we spend time preparing food with love that is nutritious. Mm -hmm. And I think the art of that, that was so much a part of our, of our heritage, of our culture, those things that were handed down. Mm -hmm. and. Just like we're finding new things to celebrate, we need to find a way to celebrate taking our time to bring a living diet into our lives and see it as a celebration. And we have to be, uh, what, do you, what do I, we want to be um, examples for one another. We have to find many ways to stimulate, just like the television stimulates us in different ways. We gotta mm -hmm. find ways of making the living diet, living, the live it experience right um, stimulated in all ways from example to um, writing about it seeing it just celebrating it in all our senses mm -hmm. you know because that will help us make a transition and even begin to debrief because we just have not on a whole holistic way debrief from our experiences and we carry those right. experiences right. It's, in our DNA. I always argue that you can't call it post-traumatic. If it is still part, it is yes. present. Yes. That P can't stand for post. <laughs> you know, this is continuing traumatic. And it, the debriefing has to be constant. Right, And right. the same thing with, with, with food. We don't see food as it's become addiction. Mm -hmm. Not only is it addiction in our, in our lives, but there are addictive elements that are in some things. And we as natural as we can stay keeps us away mm -hmm. from the addictive elements. Well, you see the same food. plantation behavior every day when you pass fast food restaurants because that is the plantation we kitchen. Align. These franchises mm -hmm. are the plantation kitchen. Mm -hmm. We all lined up mm -hmm. to get what has been allotted to us. Yes. You could not cook what is cooked in those restaurants yes. at yes. your house with yes. those prices. So you know this is being subsidized. Yes, yes. So somebody is putting plantation kitchens in our midst so that we, you know, fast foods, mm -hmm. you know, we don't have time. I like the concept of fasting dishes yes. that's in this. Yes. In other words, you, all, the concentration on eating all the time. Yeah. When they talk about the discipline, you need to, div the, not eating allows you to build discipline that allows you to resist doing things that are not necessarily to your benefit but it, at some time you are able to sustain yourself and to make a sacrifice without it being imposed upon you. It's yes. one thing to be starving. <laughs> You're not starving. No, what you have decided. You're willingly to do, making a choice. Yeah, what you have decided to do is 
to not eat or to not eat this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Fasting dishes, you know, obviously have, has to do with making that transition between the foods that you have become addicted to and the foods that you now know are the best, best things for you so that you can, as you say, some people have to stop you know, doing the animal-based products yes, yes. And, the, and the derivatives mm -hmm. of animals. They have to, have to wean slowly. Well, fasting comes in all different forms, not only fasting from foods that are not good, good for you, foods that are not healing, foods that are not living, but fasting from eating, period. At, at all. Yes, at I, all. I'm you saying. You need time. Right, yeah, I'm right. agreeing with you. I'm agreeing mm. with you. On, so I'm saying on so many levels, you know, right. again, all types of stimulation. Right. To give the body a break, it's good. Mm -hmm. You're even, there's even research about fasting now that helps to rejuvenate um, dead cells mm -hmm. or um, areas in the body mm -hmm. to um, the autophagy, it allows the body to eat those dead things mm -hmm. to have rejuvenation. Right. If we can take time right. to do that. Time. Yes. Take time to do that. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, we're, we're living, we don't have to participate, mm -hmm. you know, in what's happening in terms of eating um, at fast food places, any, any of that. Mm -hmm. we, we do live in this country that you do not have to participate mm -hmm. in that. Mm -hmm. You could take you time. You do not have to preserve the status quo. Yes, you can take time mm -hmm. for yourself. And, it, and you can create it how you need it, but you have to just be willing to take those steps for yourself. I, I, I want to mention this to you because I know that you can have a lot to say mm -hmm. about this, but you know, talking about the frequency around food production, meaning the vibration. You know, angry people cooking, stressed yeah. people cooking, mm -hmm. aggravated people cooking, exhausted, fatigued people cooking. Mm -hmm. Now, th that could be just talking about in your own house, in your own home. coming home yeah. from work. You know, I've heard people say, I just threw it on the grill. Mm -hmm. or I, you know, picked up so-and-so. The thing is, there is, there's a need for your food not to have to, I guess, imbibe or be subject to frequencies that are negative. Yes. Because if someone who loves you is preparing the food for you, they say what comes from the heart is received by the heart. So if someone who loves you is lovingly mm -hmm. preparing a meal for you, then you are, you're getting more than the nutrition. You're getting the love. But if an angry person is ticked off, and they got to go in here, mm -hmm. you know, and they, they haven't got time for this, what have you. The food is going to pick up those vibes. Yes, yes. So you're eating angry food. You've got an angry person cooking. And it'll come out. It'll, it'll come out. You, right. you will. That vibration is transferable. That, but that's something that also has to be discussed and talked about and lived because Sometimes in some areas of our community, we have not carried that over in discussion. Well, we have not talked. Yes, we have And to less and less do we talk. We got cell phones now. Mm -mm. And I've seen people sitting next to each other mm -hmm. using cell phones, you know, and not talking to each other. I took my granddaughter and her husband to an automobile rental place to pick up a car. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, he was taking care of the rental, and she was sitting beside me on her cell phone. I said, am I here? <laughs> you know, now I drove over here with you. I, you're not going to even talk to, to me. me. Yeah, we have to. We have to. Yeah, we, we, we have to be aware of yes. the fact that we don't discuss things. And consequently, we don't learn from each other. And we don't encourage each other. And we don't help each other. And to consider the other thing that I saw in here was 
the, the kinds of utensils that we use, the kinds of vessels that we put the food in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Somebody said to me, I, I sent them a picture of what I was eating and they, they sent me back a response. I haven't eaten out of a real dish for years. Yes. We don't want to wash dishes. We don't want to wash, oh. So we paper. Yeah. My mother was always alarmed, but she said, paper dishes, you know? But the thing is, to dine, to have utensils. It's an art, it's becoming a lost We art. have a lot of plastic. Mm -hmm. We're storing in a lot of plastic. We need to be storing in glass. Mm -hmm. That's true. Because. And it helps to hold the vitality of the living food. Right. It helps to hold the vitality. There, what, what I think is important is there are communities of people doing this. And I would like, and this is one way, so mm -hmm. I really appreciate you inviting me. I would like just more conversation, like you said, but a way of integrating into communities to say this is a way that you can choose. And not only is it you know, giving you the experience of a living food, but it feels good. Mm -hmm. It feels good when you put your food on the plate mm -hmm. and see it beautifully mm -hmm. and sit down and have time to eat the food. And chew it. And chew it. This and morning, let I it made, linger in your mouth and taste and it. And taste it. This morning for breakfast, I peeled a gigantic mango for my son that, that's 11. And I cut up the mango and I... Um, you know, put it on the plate. I, I was rushing, but I put it on the plate, but I still tried to make a little design. Mm -hmm. And so he would have his mango mm -hmm. for, um, for breakfast. Mm -hmm. And we, gotta, we, we have to see eating differently because sometimes people feel like that's not enough food, but it is enough food. You know, the thing about that, it, it, and I just thought about this recently and, and a young, one of my students introduced me to this idea years ago, but sometimes it takes a long time for things take to, take some time. to sink in. But simple meals. Simple meals. She said, why couldn't you just have a meal of apples? Yes, I tell people. Who would ever think that you could just sit down yes. and have a dish of apples I, Yes. and have those, you know, and get up and go on about your business. I tell people that all the time, and they say, I don't know what to eat, especially my cli um, clients who have to make a quick, quick move to right. living food because right. of cancer. They want right. to reverse their cancer. Right. And I say, if you haven't prepared something, right. don't worry. You can have, and let's say you don't want to, let's say you're tired. Right. You can have four apples, four bananas, and four oranges. You'll be okay. You're going to be fed. No. I say I that. I got to look. <laughs> I got to have. And the, the centerpiece of my meal has got to be some animal. Yes. No, yeah. That's some animal. Thing. And then I got to have side dishes. Yes. And so if I have, and if I go to a restaurant, I want to know what the sides are. You know, yes. what, what, <laughs> what's, the, what's the entree, what's the sides. Because, and some restaurants will give you three sides, mm -hmm. which really is a blessing mm -hmm. because you get to really stuff yourself. <laughs> but the thing is, when you finish eating a meal like that, you have not had one leaf yes. of anything. Yes. And you have had nothing raw. But the, 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 the simple, you know, what am I going to have? I don't have, look in the refrigerator, I don't have anything to eat. Are there any apples in there? Yes, yes. You yes. know, like you said, a mango. Yes. A papaya. Yes. You know, you could actually have a meal. For one thing, your mind has a lot to do with the way. And you have to retrain it. You have to you retrain have, yeah, you your have, eyes. You have right, to retrain your right, eyes. Right, mm -hmm. right. So I, I, the, the, um, they talk about the spiritual vitality or the spiritual vitality of the, the chef, which does not mean that 
the chef went to church this morning yes, and yes, then came yes. home and cooked. But just that the, the outlook of the chef is one that contemplates truth and beauty and justice and unity and generosity and sharing and, and kindness yes, and yes, compassion. Yes. yes. Yeah. We need that. Yeah. We need because that. if the cook is in a negative frame of mind, that negativity is going to by osmosis. It will transfer. I wish I had I would have brought pictures of my Thanksgiving table. So um, tell me what you had. So I, so my family, like I've been raw. They're good now. They're happy to come, but when I first began, they would be afraid. Like, what is that? And I would say, fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, all things that are living. Okay. And they would, you know, send somebody in to see. Or do they have some meat? You know, what do they where's have? Where's the that, mac and cheese? Where is? Yeah, where's <laughs> the mac and cheese? And I would, because because it was. Um, potluck, but I would have the main dishes, which would be the raw food. Right. So I would set up a low table, and I wouldn't allow the other food out yet, and I would have the table filled with, I would do some uh, collard salad, and that's basically cut up collard as, as thin as I can make it, shoestrings. Like, you have to, because you can't, you yes, cannot digest but, collard yes, if you don't get them Yes, and then I would massage down. it with lemon, and apple cider vinegar, a little bit of honey, a little bit of salt, a little bit of um, pepper. I like a little cayenne pepper. Um, maybe even chili, chili, um, chili powder, something, something to give it like a little kick with a little sweet, and then crushed to make it also. Um, what's that flavor? Uh, pungent, a pungent kind of savory. A little bit of crush. I would crush almonds with some garlic and um, marinate that in it. And it helps, the, the apple cider vinegar and the lemon helps to break it, it down. down. Yeah. But I would have mushrooms, cauliflower, purple cauliflower, orange carrots, white carrots, purple carrots, black carrots, um, just the whole table feel like a coup d'etat just filled with veggies, with dips and salads. And one of my favorite that um, my family loves is herb salad, which is chopped herbs with honey, habanero peppers. Oh um, no, not the not the hot one. Yes, but oh, but I chopped finely. Come. No, you I don't have to. It's come. not it's not hot like that. Okay. Just just you know just a pinch. They okay. love it. Now, um, I would have that all spread out, and I said we're gonna have this first, and we're gonna talk, and we're gonna talk about the food, mm -hmm. and that's what we would do. And then I would bring out their traditional stuff mm -hmm. that everybody brought. Mm -hmm. And do you know they would just eat that raw food and they would leave that? Other stuff. Say, please don't leave it here. Please don't leave it here. We Take, it with, Take <laughs> it with you. Take it with you. Take it. But that's every, so every year that's happened. Mm -hmm. The living food goes, mm -hmm. goes first. Mm -hmm. And then people are full and they're satisfied. Nobody is laid out and, you know, uh, without energy, mm -hmm. just loving. And they said, we had a good time. I'm going to do this. I'm going to make some of this at home. I'm going to do that. And they would still try to leave the non-living food at my right, house. Right. But they, they, they're they happy to come now. Right. And they'll tell you, what are you going to have? Are you going to have that herb salad? Mm -hmm. Are, are we going to have the um, kale salad? Are we going to have? And they would learn about new vegetables. I would mm -hmm. always make sure we had some new vegetables mm -hmm. that we can have a conversation about and what you could do with them. Mm -hmm. And so I've been doing that now, I'm gonna say at least 15 years, mm. at least 50, because I've been in this house 15 years, so at least 15 years. Just a way to set a standard, mm -hmm. as a way to have conversation, mm -hmm. stimulate the eye, the nose, right. all your senses right. to bring memory to healing, healing food and you can make that choice. And I made it simple, it wasn't too much, you know, that they mm -hmm. would say. The first time I did it, I did do a raw lasagna and mm -hmm. they were saying, what is that? I said, mm -hmm. it's a lasagna, taste it. Now that's complicated. Mm -hmm. and, and I have the apple pie, 
um, a living apple pie. Mm -hmm. I have a living key lime pie mm -hmm. with avocado, and you can make the crust with any type of nuts you like. Typically, I choose almond just because I knew nobody was allergic to that one. Mm -hmm. But you can choose pecans, you can choose walnuts, you can choose Brazilian nuts. Mm -hmm. um, just things, it, that's how I did them initially. Mm -hmm. um, but now, just simple vegetables, some fruit, but mostly vegetables. I took them on that journey though, that 15 year journey where we're just mostly vegetables and they enjoy themselves. And I'm saying that to say it's a process. Right. It's a process right. and you want to bring the love, the compassion, the acceptance. Right. And set an, a standard that this can be done, right. this can be done easily. Right. You know, you can eat a piece of cauliflower. <laughs> you can eat it <laughs> and it's delicious. Right. Yeah. And, uh, in Florida, I'm, I'm not sure if this this place is still in business, but they had a place called 118 Degrees. Okay. And all of their foods were raw. Yes, yes. And I'm telling you, they had every single thing, every dish that you can ever imagine, they had it raw. Mm -hmm. And it was made from nuts and mm -hmm, seeds mm -hmm. and vegetables. And you looked on there and you'd have to ask a question, do you really have this? Like you said, the raw lasagna. Yes. Do you, how are you doing this? Yeah, yeah. You zucchini. Know? But mm -hmm. they, that was the first place I saw zucchini spaghetti, mm -hmm. you know. They had the most wonderful food. They had the most wonderful desserts. Yes. The food was very expensive, and rightly so. Mm -hmm. It was organic. Mm -hmm. It was clean, which there's another aspect to talk about, and that's the aspect of cleanliness. Clean eating, that's a big thing now. Yeah. Clean, and my husband only, loves it. You know what he said? What? Oh, I don't mind washing these dishes. <laughs> right. <laughs> because there's no scrubbing. There's some rinsing. Right, you know? right. Yes. Clean eating and then a clean cook. Because, you know, you, you, when you go into the kitchen, don't go in in your work clothes. Yes, yes. You know, when you come home, change clothes. <laughs> Put on something else, something fresh. That'll reset your mind. Too. Wash your mm -hmm. hands. Get yes. yourself together and then go into your kitchen and prepare your food. Mm -hmm. um, it may sound like a lot of bother and a lot of trouble, but once you can develop habits of patterns of doing things that it's no chore at all. When I get up in the morning, I make my bed because mm -hmm. I don't like to see an unmade bed. So when I come home, if I go away and stay all day, the bed is made up in the house by itself. Mm -hmm. Except when, you know, somebody comes home from work or school or whatever. But the point is, when I come home, I don't want to see the unmade bed. Mm -hmm. But when I come home, I turn the bed back. Mm -hmm. Because when I do all the rest of the stuff I do, I don't want to have to think about that. So when I'm ready to go to bed, it's I can ready. just go to the but bed. But it's a conscious act too. But, it's awareness, a mm -hmm. way of being present mm -hmm. in the moment. So you, you make, you train yourself to do certain things in certain ways. And then after a while, when you first start, it may be difficult, but after a while it becomes second nature. You do it without thinking about mm -hmm. it, you know. Um, I, the only thing I do in my kitchen sink is the things you do in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not going to. Put um, your mop in there? No, <laughs> and, and I saw, I once was at somebody's house and I saw them put their mop in the, and it was hard on me, I mm -hmm. can tell you that. <laughs> and I've seen somebody with a pet wash their hands in the kitchen sink. No. Wash your hands in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. If you, you know, if you're not dealing with something in the kitchen, then don't, don't, don't mix that That's up. That's a practice. That is a practice. It is something that- It's that, a practice. Right. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, all we're emphasizing here is living. We are so devastated when we lose, and I don't like the term lose, but when someone we love makes a transition, transition. Mm -hmm. and especially if that person has been ill over time and has suffered, and you know we have been anxious about their condition, anxious about their prognosis, mm -hmm. 
it, we need to do as much as we can to, to keep fighting death, not to allow death to just have a seat at every table that we set. You yes. know, death ought not to be such a welcome visitor that we don't even notice that it's in the room. So if we could just, you know, if we could just not create suffering for our loved ones by getting ourselves in trouble with the things that we, we choose it to put in our body. It's, it's, it's such a journey for us because eating is sometimes synonymous with partying and with celebration. Happiness. Yes, eating. So they say eat to live, don't live to eat. Mm -hmm. it, we, again, we have to set that standard and seeing our friends and our relatives. I have seen so many of my good friends make good choices, change their choices, especially my friends from Louisiana. Mm -hmm. I have family from Louisiana, but I have friends from Louisiana make different choices, growing their own food, juicing, just making living, livid choices for it's themselves. It's hard to do if you don't get into, a, you have to get friends, you have to get support. It's yes. hard to be a yeah. lone wolf yes. doing these things. You, there need to be people to whom you can talk, from whom you can get recipes, um, you know, with whom you can share information. Yes. And so to build a community of people, it's now important. there's a group of people who have, who out, they're out, out in the suburbs now, but we, they have gatherings, they have got persuaded restaurants to include more raw food. Yes, oh, yeah. yes, yes, yes. And so they have gatherings at different restaurants. Yes. And people sometimes complain about the price of the meals, but they don't understand you're paying a lot for a steak. Mm -hmm. You know, you, your, your meal isn't cheap either. Yes, yes. Because yes. if, if, if meat is the centerpiece of your meal, then you, uh, you're not eating economically yes. at all. When we stopped um, buying meat and eating meat, my grocery bill went down tremendously. Mm -hmm. And now, I don't have as many, because we have five children, so I don't have as many people living you know, with me, so of course it's down tremendously. Mm -hmm. But we, the bill was cut more than in half, more than half. Not, and so people feel that it's more expensive, right. but it's not more expensive. Right. It's not more expensive. Right. And once you learn to do some fasting, it's really not as <laughs> more right. expensive. Right, right, right. To do some fasting right. is important. Right. Weekly fasting is important in healing. Right. Even for us that are relatively healthy, mm -hmm. you can, it, it also helps to rejuvenate the aging process. Mm -hmm. And so fasting is just essential is really essential and I agree with you and I, I think that I have to change some things one of the things I always do this is the way uh, I got myself to stop smoking mm -hmm. I just listened to everything that I could listen to read everything I could read about the damages mm -hmm. Of, uh, of nicotine yes. and all the additives that they put into mm -hmm. the tobacco. The back tobacco was enough. But By then itself. when you get through as the, in the street, they say stepping on it. Mm -hmm. You know, when you get through adding all these other things, then you get addicted not just to the tobacco, but you're addicted to some additives. drugs that yes. are added to it. Mm -hmm. But when I, I, when I wanted to change that and was, it was not, did, had not gathered enough of whatever I needed energy to do it, mm -hmm. then I just started turning myself off mm -hmm. by investigating. Yes. And so that's what people need to do. They need to look at food production. They look meat production. If you see what is done to animals to repair them for consumption, that would be a turnoff. To a lot of people, but sometimes it's not. It's not, it's not. If you, I was talking to a gentleman today, if you just take one week of eating as well as you can, because the body creates um, a mucus layer in your stomach when you eat high toxic mm -hmm. toxicity. You got one minute. Hurry. Okay. 
And if you can take one week and clean, be as clean as you can, mm -hmm. if you go back after that one week, you will have immediate re response in your body. And that tells you, because when you eat an apple, you don't get a response. But mm -hmm. if you go back to eating fried chicken or whatever, mm -hmm. there's a response, swelling, inflammation, mm -hmm. all those types of things. And it lets you know, I don't need that. Because mm -hmm. sometimes the, the, the production of the meat does not discourage people. But if, sometimes you might have the type of person that needs that immediate body response. Mm -hmm. Oh, swelling, mm -hmm. that's sodium, I'm swelling, mm -hmm. you know. My arthritis is kicking up. You mm -hmm. eat well, you're not, you don't feel that arthritis. Mm -hmm. You don't feel that inflammation. So that's something I would like to leave everybody with. Clean it up best you can. Well, I think you are a great Thank example of Thank practicing you. what you preach. And I want all the information because I have to get nearer to you so that I can, can clean up yes. some, you, some Look, things. you have been an example for this community for a long time. You look magnificent. You've been doing a great job leading us. You've but been I, doing a great I job. But I think I backslid after That's I got okay. a diagnosis and I was allowed myself to be persuaded that I needed to do some things I had not been doing. Yes, yes. yes. Um, that happens. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to change. Yep. Well, look, just call me. I'll come over. I'll chat. I have, I didn't say this on online, but I have something um, every, every couple of months when it fills up, it's called a chop in. So okay. instead of like a cookie in, we come and we chop together. Oh, is the message. Thank you.